Well, here we go, it's match day. It's Lincoln City versus Sunderland all the way down in Sinsel Bank Stadium. And Sunderland have got quite a few great fans going down today. Hopefully Sunderland can win. I'm going for a 2-0 victory, the first clean sheet of the season. Lincoln are going through a bit of a sticky patch at this moment in time, but they've been playing really good football over the last few seasons with Danny Cowley and his brother. But now since Danny Cowley's left the Huddersfield, they've been going through a sticky patch they fell away a bit, but now their new managers came in, so hopefully he can't rejuvenate this side today. And hopefully Sunderland can get a victory. We really do need three points today because another home match has been postponed next week at home to Fleetwood. I think Fleetwood also wanted it called off, so there isn't much we could really do about it. We have to suck it and say, and hopefully, if we get three points today, you know, we're going to the international break on a high. But we have to get through, it's really, really, today is one of the most important games of the season so far for me. We really need three points before this international break creeps upon us. We can't afford to drop any more points to go further down the league. Here we go, it's the team news before the match starts. It's Lincoln City versus Sunderland at the Sinsel Bank Stadium. In goal, John McLaughlin, I would like to see Burge in goal, but unfortunately John McLaughlin keeps himself I mean, I don't mind John McLaughlin. Don't get me wrong, he was great last season. He's had a dip in form. Now, it's time when managers managers worth the salt can spot players that have dips in form and possibly drop them put somebody else in. I did say last week on the SFC Fan TV that John McLaughlin has had a dip in form. He should be dropped. He'll do him the world of good. Lee Burge had a fantastic run in the Cups. He should be brought into the fold. Right back, Conor McLaughlin. Left back, we got De Buck. Then we got Willis and Lynch. Central defensive partnership. That was so good last weekend. Then we have a midfield. Personally, McGeox in midfield, I'd rather have power. Sorry, McGeox in midfield with power. I'd rather have power with Dobson, but it's not my choice. Then we have 9 up in front, in front of the two central midfielders. To the left, we have, we've got Maguire and we got Gooch. And then Charlie Wyke up front. That's the team on, I mean, brilliant news on the subs bench. McGeady is back. And also Matt Nutley, the m and is back on the subs bench. I do agree that we can't start them after they've been injured for so long. But I expect them to come on at half time or the second half at some point. So that's the team news. I did say a 2-0 home, 2-0 away victory. But I'm kind of thinking now... With that team itself, I'm not particularly happy with that central midfield. I'm not particularly happy with Wyke up front. I'd rather start Grigg. So, could be a 3-1 away victory, possibly. They've got a new manager in, so Lincoln's going to be up for this. They're going to be really chomping at the bit at this match. They're going to be going for everything 100 miles an hour, Lincoln. So, we have somehow, we've got to take... We've got, we've, got to, we've got to keep it quiet for the first 20 minutes. And hopefully we can build on that and try not to concede a goal. I did see a 2-0 victory early on today. But when I've seen the team news, I'm kind of thinking more like a 3-1 away victory. I think we will concede at some point. So there we go. So hopefully I'll see you at half time when Sunderland will be on top. Catch you in a bit. Well, it's half time, folks. And I need a drink. I've been for me six mile run today. First time for a couple of days. And I do need this drink. It is half time. It is Lincoln City 1, Sunderland 0. And at this moment in time, Lincoln are by far, are by far the best team on the pitch. Lincoln City, with their new manager, they wanted, wanted more than Sunderland Football Club. Lincoln City wanted more than Sunderland Association Football Club. Lincoln City have the drive, have the will, have the want. Their new manager has this team up for the challenge. Is it Appleton, the new manager for Lincoln? Lincoln have been far the better side and it only took something like 20 minutes or something before Lincoln actually scored. And it, was, it wasn't it was very good play. Mc, McGuire lost the ball, tried to do a, a fancy pass, went out of play. They got the ball, crossed the ball over and our defence was sloppy, not, 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 not too slow. And John McLaughlin again, for me, was a fault for this goal. He waited for the ball. One of their players nipped in and passed it round the keeper. 
John McGlone, like I said at the start, like I said last week in the start of this match, John McLaughlin is not playing very well at this moment in time. He needs a rest. He needs a confidence boost. He needs to put, put on the bench and let Burge come in. Let Burge, the player who's playing really well, should be in the team. Jack Ross should be dealing with the situation. You know, not every... You can't have players who are just on the team sheet regardless, week in, week out, how they're playing. Nobody has a divine right to be in the starting eleven. No matter who you are, what your name is, how good you're playing. Your history, how good you played last season. John McLaughlin has had a dip in form. He needs to be dropped and Bird needs to be brought in. The whole team haven't played well the first half. Jack Ross, you normally go in, you normally go in at half time, one or two up, and you do your laid back team talk. And the players probably take absolutely no notice of you. Am I being harsh? Or do they do take notice? But because they think they're going to win, they're just so laid back the players. Is it the manager's fault or is it the players' fault that we come out the second half and we're sloppy as fuck and we half asleep? But today's different. We're going in one down. We need some inspiration from somewhere. If Jack Ross can't get himself motivated to inspire the team at half time, do you get someone like Ledbitter in the change room who points out the hard facts? Is there any leaders on that pitch? Look at Lynch, big brick shit house. He should be barking out some orders along with Willis. Half time for me, bring off Wyke, bring on Will Grigg, bring off McGeoch, put on Dobson. That's two changes I make straight away. I'm not saying, you know, what, 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 what does Charlie White actually bring to the team? In this first half, he's done absolutely nothing. So let's hope second half we can come out and we can show some passion, some derive. Yes, derive. Some passion, drive, some want, some will, desire, the need, self belief, leadership on that pitch. Them fans down there have gone all the way to Lincoln. Brilliant away fans. We need something for them fans to team about. Jack Ross, it's down to you. You're the manager. There's no point going an international break on a losing side, dropping three points, going miles behind the rest of the rest of the teams. You're doing yourself no favors. You lose this match, Jack Ross, and it, it, you know it's over. It is really over. Even though I can't say Donald getting rid of you. And like I said before, I will support you as you're the son of the manager and I will support the team. But in my videos and my vlogs, I will speak my opinion. It's a game of opinions. This is my opinion. Jack Ross has to earn. It's 45 minutes. It's now or never, Jack Ross. It's now or never for you. Get that team out and let's get the winning. Keep the winning run going. I want to see more from the midfield. I can't really ask for more from Wyke because... I don't believe he can give anything. I may be harsh. Like I said before, Charlie White is a lovely bloke. You know, he's a fantastic player at his own level. But I think League One is too much. But if he came out and he scored a hat-trick and, and i got egg on my face, I will be over the moon. Right, we'll see you at full time and hopefully it's a good result and we've pulled out the bag three goals and we win 3-1. See you later. Oh, it's finished. Lincoln City 2. Clueless, heartless, soft as fuck, Sunderland nil. And I need this drink tonight. 2,000 plus Sunderland fans going all the way to Lincoln. Lincoln, well done Lincoln City. Outclassed, outplayed. More heart, more desire, more determination than any player on the Sunderland football side at this moment in time. Lincoln City were far, you know, by far the better side. Easily the better side on the park. And Lincoln City, you know, this is the Lincoln City fans. Well done, Lincoln City. You deserve three points. You showed Sunderland Association Football Club how to play football, how to play with passion, determination, desire and heart. Because we were absolutely a soft touch today. Soft as clots. Not one single player could come off that pitch today with any pride. And if I'm doing such a hard, I'm being too harsh on Sunderland. Well, I'm sorry. I'm fucking sick of spilling drink everywhere. Oh, man. 
Fuck off. I do apologise for swearing. I really do apologise for swearing. I shouldn't be swearing. I'm really sorry. But just the way I feel today. That today was absolute dross. Dross the boss Ross. Ross is dross. Simple as. Jack Ross cannot come out and defend his players and his tactics and his whatever he wants to say today. That was pathetic. It was pathetic. It was disgusting. It was diabolical. Them fans going down there to watch a heartless performance from Sunderland Football Club outclassed by Mr. Appleton or Appleby, Appleby, Appleton's team. Absolutely brilliant from Lincoln. Kyle Walker, absolutely man of the match for me. Two goals, on and off from Nottingham Forest. Des Walker's son, well done Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker, you even missed the penalty for your hat-trick. Well, a few weeks ago, we played Peterborough. And a few weeks before that, we played Ipswich. And we were awful against Ipswich. And we were awful against Peterborough. And in national break came. And it was depressing. Two weeks of depressingness. And what happens now? We play Lincoln City. You know, Danny Cowley's gone to Huddersfield. Huddersfield have won 3 0 today. Why couldn't we get Danny Cowley and his brother? He would sort this team out. He would get us playing with some passion and some determination. And he would take and strip it right back to the bare bones and sort everything out. The fitness levels, the lot. Because all of our players, you know, we get players like McNulty, lovely bloke. I wish he'd score a load of goals, injury prone. And now Debock, injured, taken off. Injury prone. We get the we get we get all the, the leftovers. Stuart Donald, you've getting the leftovers from everywhere and brought them to Sunderland and the injury prone on the CV that do a good job. And when they're fit, they're great. But the injury prone, they're no good if they're always injured. I mean, where do we start today? Where do we start? Jack Ross, where do you start? What's your thoughts? Are you gonna defend these players? Are you gonna defend your team tactics? Let's start from the back. John McLaughlin, like I said at half time, he shouldn't have been starting for me. He should have Burge. Bring Burge in. You bring players. Players go out there and they perform and they do well. And they deserve, if other players aren't performing well, to be brought into the team. Burge deserves to be brought in as number one. And McLaughlin deserves to be dropped to the bench. I'm not saying for all eternity. I'm not saying forever. I'm just saying, let's give Burge a chance. Then left back, we've got Debock. Debrock. De Brock, because he's always broke and he's Brock. De Brock is Brock. As much as that 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 defence was great last week, when they are fit, for me, they shouldn't have played De Brock so close after Wednesday if he's if he's gonna be injured. And he's injured again. And what happens? Poor Luke O9 gets dragged from his position into left back. Seriously, fucking left back, Luke O9. Seriously, have we got nobody out there in our team? Where's Hume? What is going on? Surely we must know if De Brock's going to get another injury. What's happening on the training pitch? Where's the physiotherapies? Physiotherapies? Where the physio physios? All this technology, all this equipment that we don't know. That someone like De Brock's going to get injured again. Brittle De Brock. Lovely bloke. Probably a lovely bloke. I don't know him. You know. Decent player. Played great last two matches. But he's injured again. And there's no point having players on loan. If they're going to be injured. And we kind of kind of knew he was going to get injured again. And nobody played well. You know. Y y your Lynches and your Willises didn't have great games. Mika Lopez didn't have a great game. And Stuart Donald has done a fantastic, you know, in, in the whole big picture, right? Stuart Donald, you've done a fantastic job finance-wise. Finance-wise, you've done brilliant. We're on a great financial foot and we're solid. We're not going to go into administration. That's brilliant. But when it comes to football and knowledge, do you have any knowledge at all? The players you've brought in, seriously, loanees, free transfers, we are the worst Sunderland side in the entire history of Sunderland Association Football Club. And Stuart Donald, you're the guy at the top. 
You predicted 100 and odd points this season. Really? 100 and odd points? How delusional are you? And I want you to succeed. I want this takeover so much to go through at this moment in time because this football is absolutely dross from Jack Ross. And I said before, I wanted him out for a few games now. And I don't like seeing managers being sacked. And as so long as a manager, I will support him during a match. I will support him at the match. I will support him. I won't boom. I won't beat for his head. But after the game, in my vlogs, I can say what I want. Because it's my channel. It's my opinions. And that's all that matters to me at this moment in time. And I can say it. Plain as day. He's not good enough. The team isn't good enough. Everything... Away from football, Stuart Donald has done absolutely fantastic. But when it comes to the football inside, we're being let down with poor performances, poor team selections. You know, let's face it, the players that are being brought in aren't good enough. Willis, decent. Burge, decent. Yes. And, and, and it likes your McNulty's. And it likes your Brooks. Yes. But they're always injured. So today's performance, John McLaughlin. I'm going to give a 5 out of 10. Conor McLaughlin, 6 out of 10. De Brock, Brock, 6 out of 10. Willis, 6.5 out of 10. Lynch, a poo of 5 today. Give away the penalty. Got a yellow card. Five yellow cards. Pathetic. McGeady, 4 out of 10. Yellow card. Who else got yellow cards today? Yeah. Maguire. Maguire, seriously Maguire Maguire, with the ability you have and I know you came out in a statement a few weeks ago and you said you're not machines you're not, no you're not machines but you're better than that Maguire today, you are better than that and I'm going to give you a pass just because you're the king and because what you've done before in the past you're getting a pass John McLaughlin, you're getting a pass because you know what you've done last season but it stops now. There's no more passes. It stops now. You need to start performing. Putting in the passion, the will, the want, the desire, the determination, the ambition. Where's your fucking ambition? Do you want to be in the championship next season? Or are you happy getting paid the money sitting in League One? Playing like that shite the dear man. We are the softest team in League One. We are soft as shite. North East football is diabolic at this moment in time. Middlesbrough, teetering with going down as well. Shite. Newcastle, garbage. And we are the bottom of the trash pile. We are. We are the shittest of the lot. There's no, there's no, there's not laughing matter. <laughs> you can laugh. You can smile. You can laugh. You can make jokes all you want. But this is no, Latin, no laughing matter. we got to wait now because of the game postponed next week against Fleetwood. Two weeks after this garbage performance. Not one team out there put any kind of performance in. And what does Jack Ross see in Charlie Wake? Really, Jack Ross, what do you see in Charlie Wake? I'd rather play Benji up there. Seriously. Absolutely dross from the captain, the boss, the top of the pile. It starts, it stops, it begins with Jack Ross. Jack Ross, you are a lovely bloke. You're a nice man. You know, and you know, I just wish the fucking would sort the team out. But seriously, the day that was absolute garbage. We had no chances, no chances, really, seriously, no chances. Their keeper was sitting there with a can and a drink and basically with a hat on and a cap on or whatever he's doing and just writing out his memoirs. I'm playing against the Sunderland side today. This Sunderland side is basically heartless, clueless, Soft as fuck, turning up for the wage. They're not interested in winning a game of football. We today, Lincoln City, we have a new manager in Mike Appleton. And we want to win. We want to prove to our manager that we deserve to be in the team next week. We love our fans. We have 10,000 fans at the club today, at the stadium today. Our first home game in charge. And with the likes of Kyle Walker up front, we're going to win this match today. Sunderland 
have a soft touch and easy push over. Piece of piss. Easiest three points of the season. And it's embarrassing. It really is embarrassing. Simple as. I don't want to dwell on this match too. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. I don't want to go on about this too much too long. I want to say, well done, Wickham. They came back from 2-0 down against Peterborough to make it two's a piece. Peterborough scored again, and Wickham come back, and they drew three's a piece. Well done, Ipswich. Won again. I think Portsmouth won. If they won, well done to Portsmouth. And here's the table as it stands right now, and it's, it's no laughing matter. We are probably just going to be playoffs at, at best this season. So here we go, Ipswich Town, played 11, they've won 8 and drawn 3, plus 16, won 27. That, 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 that's, that's, that's just, uh, bookies, bookmakers out there, Ladbrokes, Corals, William Hill, pay out now on Ipswich winning the league. Ipswich are going to win the league. Never mind people saying Sunderland will be promoted by Easter. It's absolute. It's, it's dreamland. Ipswich now are going to be champions. Let's face it. Well done, Ipswich Town. You are by far the best team in this league, and you deserve to be in that position. And I wish you all the best. Well done, Ipswich. Fantastic. Surprise team of the season. Wickham Wanderers played twelve plus eight, twenty three points. Again, like I said, well done, Wickham today. Then we have Fleetwood. As much as I hate Joey Barton, he's got Fleetwood Town playing decent football. There we have. And then we've got Coventry. Who got smashed the day of Rotherham? Rotherham, again, are going to be a dark horse. They will be in the playoffs. No doubt about it. Absolutely no doubt about it. So there we have. We have Coventry. Blackpool. And Simon Grayson have even gone above Sunderland. Blackpool. And then we got... Sunderland, plus two, plus two, seriously, plus two, 19 points. We are only four points behind second place. And there's, and there's Peterborough. Peterborough, 18 points. So we're four points behind second place with a game in hand. People, the happy clappers out there be saying, it isn't the end of the world. We're only four points behind second place. But let's face it, this is the worst Sunderland side in the history of Sunderland Football Club. And not one single player went to Lincoln today to perform, to play with any passion, with any heart. You know, with this, this at heart, this is what you're playing for. Southern Football Club, 2,000 football fans going down to Lincoln, spending the hard-earned cash on train, on bus, on money, to, to pay for the food, the drink, the day out at Lincoln, to watch the team come away being absolutely embarrassed from a side who's been beaten, smashed out the earth. Look at me review. They haven't won for ages. And the win with ease the day against Sunderland. That is shocking, mind, Sunderland Football Club. Sunderland Association Football Club with Jack Ross and Stuart Donald at the helm. That is shocking today. Every single Sunderland fan today should be reimbursed. With monies, I just pray for the day the takeover takes place. We need the takeover to happen. And God knows, next week, we don't play against Fleetwood. Other teams are going to win. We're going to drop further behind. We have these stupid games in hand. We can't even win them anyway. So what's the point? So, fantastic day for Sunderland Association Football Club. An amazing day. In the depths of League One, we stay for another season because there's no way in the world unless the takeover takes place and we get some players in who want to play with a bit of drive, with a bit of heart. Do you enjoy? Do you know? You know, likes of Dublin. You know, you got you got you got your defensive team. You got your your Willis and your Lynch and your Debock and your McLaughlin and McLaughlin and Goal. Then you got that, 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 that big nice bloke up front. A nice bloke up front, Charlie Wake. Can't hit a barn door from two foot. I can say that. Most of Sunderland fans can say that. What is Jack Ross the Dross doing it? Why can't he see it? Then we got McGuire today. had a bad game. Gooch, terrible. Terrible day for Gooch as well. None of these players even decided to turn up the day. They're getting paid the money. And they're they're basically taking the piss out of Sunderland fans. In the midfield, power, and I can't even say the bloke's name because 
I'm forgetting his name because I don't even like him in midfield. Dobson should be starting. There's only your nine who I like. Out, out of today's performance, oh nine. 9 He's up there trying to score goals and he gets put back on left back. That's all I've got to say. It's absolutely dire. Stuart Donald, you're a nice man. You've got Sunderland Football Club at heart. You're doing a fantastic job off the football pitch. But you know, you know nothing when it comes to managing a club, when it comes to organising the team. And you need a manager at Sunderland Football Club who can sort this team out. This team on paper is good enough to get promoted, but it's not being led properly as much as you. You love Jack Ross. You've supported him all this time. You're giving your back under him. He's supporting you in the financial side of things with your players you've brought in. But it's time to let go, to be the bigger man. You've got to know when to cut the ties. Let Jack Ross go. Let him go back to Scotland. I wish him all the best in Scotland. He has to go. We need to bring a manager in who knows this football, who knows League One, who knows the championship, who knows how to get players motivated, how to organise a team, who want to win a game of football. It's okay playing at home, going two or one, two or three up and then hanging on and just say winning and getting a 1-1 one, one draw but going away from home we've been found out twice this season three times really because Ipswich should have smashed us all over look at if Jack Ross gets sacked it isn't the end of the world Jack Ross is not a stupid man he's an intelligent man he just can't motivate this side he will go back to Scotland. He will get a job. He'll get paid money. His family will be okay. We need a manager at Sunderland Football Club who can manage a big club like Sunderland Football Club and get this team motivated. Sort out the tactics. Get us terrifying other teams like we should be. Get the weak from the chaff. The weak from the chaff. What's that supposed to say? We need to get the strong players and take them away from the weak players. Players who have the ability to win football games. We want to see exciting times, exciting football at Sunderland Football Club, home and away. Not Sunderland fans going all the way down Lincoln, wasting hard-earned cash. Coming back depressed as fuck. Come on, Stuart Donald, man. You're the bigger person. You're the bigger man. You can do this. Find us a manager that can get this team sorted out and get us back in the championship. And it's all on your shoulders, Stuart. I want you to succeed. Every single son of man wants you to succeed. We've all wanted Jack Ross to succeed, but it's not going to happen. <coughs> he hasn't learned from his mistakes. It's time for Jack Ross to go. So now we've got international break next week. So we got we got two weeks to dwell on another loss. Fantastic football from Sun Football Club. Yet again, nothing to shout about. Nothing to be happy about. We go back to work Monday morning. We get the piss taken out of us. We're the laughing stock of the North East. Basically, we are. So what are you going to do, Stuart Donald, about it? Are you going to back this shit? Are you just waiting until the takeover takes place? And let them do the dirty? Because you're too nice of a man to do it. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching this video. I'm really sorry it's a depressing video. It's a sad video. It's upsetting. It's awful. But it's done. We have to move on. We need to forget about this shite. <laughs> Even though we can just... Tomorrow, SFC Fan TV. I'll be on the panel. Like it, love it or not. Please subscribe to my channel, we much appreciate it. Thanks for watching the live views, the live stream earlier on. Give this video a like and please hit the notification bell. And we move on. I give up. Thanks for watching again and we'll catch you later.